Welcome to Integrals Applied Part 1. Right here's our slide we've been looking over in all of our integrals uh, slideshows. Um, Antiderivative, and again, the purpose is to get back to the original function. All right, so let's say we have an, a, a question like this where we, it states, find the equation describing the position of an object moving along a straight line when the acceleration is a equals 3t, when the velocity is at t equals 4 seconds is 40 meters per second, and when the object has traveled 86 meters from the origin at t equals 2 seconds. So there is a lot of information in that question right there. And we're going to just try to figure out what it is that they're asking. So to start off, they're asking for the position of an object. They tell us that acceleration is equal to 3t, and that the velocity at a specific time, 4 seconds, is 40 meters per second. And that distance, a distance, is 86 meters at 2 seconds. Well, a couple of things we need to know is that velocity is equal to the integral of acceleration, and distance is equal to the integral of velocity. So we've got an acceleration, so we can go ahead and set that, um, take the integral of that and find our velocity. And then we were given a specific velocity at time equals four seconds. So now that we can, we can put that into the equation and solve for the C of the velocity formula. And we find that C is equal to 16 meters per second. That's the C that belongs to the velocity formula. So next we want to put that C back into the velocity formula. And we get V equals 3T squared over 2 plus 16. And now we can take the integral of velocity to, to get our distance. So we end up with a distance equation equal to t to the third power divided by 2 plus 16t plus c. All right, so now we want to solve for the c in the distance formula. And in the original problem, it gave us 86 meters at t equals 2 seconds. So we're going to put 86 meters into the formula and solve for c. And we've got a final equation of s equals t to the third power divided by 2 plus 16t plus 50 meters. Now that is the equation that describes the position of the object. That is our final answer. All right, next question. We've got a stone and it is dropped from a height of 100 feet. For a free-falling object, acceleration due to gravity is negative 32 feet per second square. Find the distance the stone has traveled after two seconds. Note that the initial velocity is zero because the stone was dropped and not thrown. Okay, in addition to finding the distance the stone has traveled um, after two seconds, it also wants to know what the velocity is of the stone when it hits the ground. Okay, so we've got, we want to find the position slash distance of an object after two seconds and the velocity when the stone hits the ground. We know the initial height is 100 feet above ground and the initial velocity is zero. And acceleration due to gravity is equal to uh, negative 32 feet per second squared. We also know that velocity is equal to the integral of acceleration and that distance is equal to the integral of velocity. So we know our velocity is equal to the integral of uh, the acceleration of minus 32 feet per second squared. So we take the integral of that. We know that the initial speed was zero, so our c was that initial speed. And so we've got V equals minus 32T. If we take the integral of that, we'll have distance. So the integral of that is minus 32T 
raised to the 1 plus 1 divided by 1 plus 1 plus c, leaving us with a distance formula equal to minus 16t squared plus c. All right, so now that we've got our distance formula, s equals minus 16t squared plus c, this formula describes the equation from the perspective of ground. So s is uh, the distance, for, always going to be the distance from ground. And so when they give us, th this is a little bit tricky, because, and you have to pay attention to this, because they're saying how far has the stone traveled versus what is the distance from ground. So we're going to find the distance from ground after two seconds. So we put our, our time in, two seconds, and we find that the distance from ground is 36 feet. But that's not what the question is asking. It's asking how far has the stone traveled? So that means how far has it fallen? So if I know that I'm at the distance of 36 feet from ground, and I originally started at 100 feet, that the delta, the, how, the the distance that the stone has traveled will be 100 feet minus 36 feet. And we find that the delta S or the distance that the stone has traveled is 64 feet in two seconds. Now the next part of this question is asking what was the velocity when it hit the ground? So I need to know how long it took to travel the distance of 100 feet or how long it took to get to the distance of zero. So zero is ground. And so we're going to rewrite our question and then solve for t. So we know that we started at 100 feet. That was our c. And that we wanted to get to zero feet. So zero is equal to minus 16 t squared plus 100. We get t squared is equal to negative 100 divided by 16. And then we can solve for t by taking the square root of 100 divided by 16. That gives us the time it takes to hit the ground, which is 2.5 seconds. So now we know the time that it takes for the rock to hit the ground, 2.5 seconds. Later, after the stone is dropped, it's going to hit the ground. But the question wanted to know, what is the velocity when it hits the ground? So we need to go back to our, our original derived velocity equation and put in the time of 2.5 seconds. And then solve for the velocity of negative 80 feet per second uh, at impact.